Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with GY6Vids. Thanks for coming by to watch. We're definitely gonna have some fun today. We have the IWI TS12 12 gauge rotating cylinder shotgun. Let's get into it. Rotate. So this shotgun is made by IWI, the same people that make the Masada, they make the Tavor X95 and the Tavor 1 million. There's a lot of Tavors and this one's the Tavor 12 gauge. This one's called the TS12 and this one's been designed from IWI for the last two or three years. I've been waiting for quite a long time for this to actually come out. I've been very much anticipating it and awaiting it. I love the idea of rotating front tubes that allow you for high capacity and very quick interchanging of the next shells without having to do a selector switch like you have on a KSG. And you don't have to worry about coming back here and finagling with anything. You just push the release, which is right near the front of the trigger, which is very ergonomic. And all you have to do is rotate the cylinder either clockwise or counterclockwise. It works in either fashion. Obviously contractors, military, first responders, special forces units, this could come in handy if it functions properly and we see reliability as the time goes on because obviously this is just one unit. This is not a bunch of different shotguns. So no matter what happens in today's video, this is my review and my opinion and my looks of this shotgun in particular. You can get a shotgun yourself and have some issues with it, you never know. So it's up to us as a community to really put in information and talk about things we find. But don't be so quick to jump on negative things because this world's so full of people looking to be negative all the time. I feel like there's a never ending rush in social media nowadays for especially in reviewers to find the negatives in a product rather than just looking at the product for what it is, seeing pros and cons and reporting that information honestly to the people that are watching their videos rather than just trying to be a clickbaity, you know, I'm gonna find the problem with it type of guy. The industry and people in general are just getting more and more negative as the years go on and I don't wanna be a part of that. I don't wanna play that game. It's just too draining and we all only have 24 seven, 365. Why waste it being a negative curmudgeon? So that was a little bit of a sidetrack. Getting back into the shotgun though, <laughs> you have a full pick rail up top. You also have M-Lock on both sides. You can put M-Lock devices and M-Lock pick rails if you wanted to. You also have an adjustable gas block here in the front above the barrel. You can adjust the L setting or low or the H setting or high for low velocity shells or high velocity shells. And it's supposed to reduce recoil into your shoulder as you're shooting for high velocity shells and allow for more reliability for low velocity shells on the low setting. Um, we will see. This shotgun runs Benelli Beretta choke style chokes, so you can run whatever chokes you want. But remember, if you are putting a modified or full choke on the shotgun, don't shoot slugs through it because you can have some big problems and destroy the gun or have it blow up in your face if it doesn't get through that uh, tighter choke. So running anything less than modified, you're gonna be fine shooting rifled slugs, uh, but just keep that in mind. Also, you can put a salvo on this, and I have a salvo. I'll talk about that more here in a second as the video goes on, but you can put a suppressor on here, so stay tuned. You have your receiver back here, obviously 18 and a half inch barrel. It is a bullpup, so the barrel goes from here back to here in the receiver. It's condensed, it's compact, it's nice and snug. It looks cool, very futuristic, and the weight is not bad at all either. So that's pretty awesome. The balance of it when it's empty feels kind of a little wonky because you have a lot more weight back here with the aluminum and a lot less weight up here with the polymer. You kind of have a big booty on this beast, so it kind of wants to sit into your shoulder, but when you load up the tubes with shotgun shells, it balances itself out. But as you shoot the tubes, it gets more and more heavy in the back. So you kind of have to practice with the shotgun on your targets and train with it to get used to that recoil change as the cylinders drain. On the back side, you have these little ports. This is where you feed your shotgun shells into your tubes. You also have releases, so you can release shells one at a time by pushing this little button right here. That'll release shells if you wanted to drain the tubes and empty them. But for the most part, when you push shells in here, it'll load the lower right tube. Push shells in here, loads the lower left tube. And in each tube, you can hold five two and three quarter inch shotgun shells or four three inch shotgun shells. You can load either one, but you get 12 capacity plus one with three inch 
and you get 15 capacity plus one with two and three quarter. Keep in mind though, which is really awesome, this is a semi-automatic bullpup shotgun. It's not pump action like the KSG and it's not pump action like other bullpup 12 gauges out there. It is semi-auto, which is fantastic. But also when you drain the tube, the first tube that's in line with the barrel, all five shells go out, the bolt will lock to the rear. And when it locks to the rear, you know obviously you're empty. When you rotate to the next cylinder, shell automatically loads into it and you're ready to go again. You don't have to hit any buttons. You don't have to finagle around with release or nothing. So as you boom, 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 you don't have to hit buttons. You can just cycle through a ton of 12 gauge shotgun shells. On top, I do have a holographic sight. This is from Vortex Optics. This thing's awesome. It's USB rechargeable. It takes the typical CR one, two, three A batteries like you see on many other uh, optics on the market. They also have a magnifier that just came out as well, which can fit behind it, which gives you three times magnification through your holographic sight as well, if you're having it on a rifle. For today's video, I'm leaving that magnifier off because this is a 12 gauge and I'll be shooting at only 21 feet. So the general specs on this shotgun, the overall length is 28 inches or just over 28 inches, but still having an 18.5 inch barrel due to it being a bullpup shotgun. This system does run a short stroke gas piston inside the receiver. The handguard, the rotating tube, the pistol grip, and the main body in the middle is made out of a reinforced polymer, but the back of the gun and the receiver is made out of metal. Right above the right-handed feeding port, you have the bolt released. Your safety is right above your trigger finger. Very easy to select with your index and thumb. It isn't ambidextrous because the ejection port's only on the right-hand side and you can't reverse that. But you can remove the charging handle and put it on the other side. So if you wanted to charge in this way, kind of used to an AK style of charging. So boom, 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 you can come back here and lock that back if you wanted to. But you really only need to charge this very seldomly if you're using it the right way because of the way when you rotate the cylinders, it feeds the next shell in and it locks back when it's done. You really don't have to charge it that often. So it's kind of a, eh, it's a pro, but it's not really an end all be all, but it is cool that you can pull that handle out and stick on the other side. As far as the handle goes, you pull this out. They say pull aggressively or firmly. Gather. Okay, charging handle comes out and you can stick it on the other side. But you also use this to rotate your gas system down. So if you wanted to go from high and low, you take that same charging handle, you stick it right in that little opening, push down and you're in the high function for high velocity shells or back up for low. And then when you're done, you just push it back in that little slot right there. Give it a little extra loving care, a little aggression. It is a shotgun if it breaks. That's its fault, not mine. Get in there. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> you can use quick detach slings in here or on this side or back in the back side of the stock or on the other side of the stock. Up to you. You have these cutout grooves where the shotgun shells slide in. So when you are loading this, you can put it up like you're doing a tactical shotgun in three gun or in other tactical environments. And if you had a belt that had shotgun shells on it, you can grab. And when you grab off those belts, you pry. I didn't bring mine today. I don't have it, sadly. But when you pry, you then have like two or three in your hand, especially two and three quarter, you can have three in your hand and you hold them like this and you can slide those all in. And I've tried it and it works. So I, I, on camera, it's probably not gonna look as tactical, cool, but is what it is. So Tavor TS-12, 12 gauge bullpup semi-automatic shotgun. Let's start shooting this bad boy. One ounce rifle slug. <laughs> All right, 21 feet away, we have some steel targets set up. This is a 12 gauge shotgun. You guys understand what it shoots, shotgun shells. Show you the reliability of what happens with this shotgun as we move from shell to shell to shell. And that's the biggest question about new shotguns in the market is how reliable is it when it comes to feeding, you know, two and three quarter, three inch, 
buckshot, slugs, throw a stone, you're gonna hit another type of shotgun shell in the market and obviously I can't get them all, but I do have a good selection and I wanna say a shout out to the ammunition sponsor of today's video, that is you guys. I don't have ammunition sponsors. I have you guys to support me on Patreon. I definitely appreciate you guys going over there and checking it out. Uh, can't say thank you enough to those who have jumped on board. I don't have a ton of Patreon support, but the ones that are on there, I definitely appreciate. And I wanna say thank you to you guys. And if you haven't become a patron and you want to, go do it. And if you don't, whatever, I'm gonna still keep doing this. <laughs> but I definitely appreciate those who have jumped on board. It definitely means a lot, but enough talking, let's get into it. So like I was talking about, three tubes, they cycle through. You can hold five shells of two and three quarter or four shells of three inch shells and you can carry one in the tube. So right out of the gate, I definitely like the look of it. It's very futuristic, very spacey, very space age type gun. Uh, I like the sleek look of it. At first, when I first grabbed it, it's so light for what it does. I was like, oh man, I thought it was gonna be heavier, but the back receiver is definitely heavy and it has a good feel to it. And so when you load the tubes up, it balances itself out. As you drain those tubes, it gets lighter and lighter in the front. So you gotta kind of practice with the gun to get used to that recoil change as your tubes get more and more dry. Of course, you have chokes and it does take that Beretta Benelli choke. And I do have a Salvo 12. Quite like this, here's my Salvo. I have it all wrapped up, use it for duck hunting. Uh, saves your ears quite a bit, but you can imagine that right on the front like so it's going to be awesome and stay tuned i'm going to do that i just don't have a benelli beretta choke for this this is strictly for my remington 870 and ksg this is going to happen uh, i think it's just a cool look and i can't wait to hear what it sounds like so i have typical shotgun shells here i have a bunch of the standard federal and it's shooting at 1290 feet per second which is just over the minimum velocity that the tavor ts12 recommends they say that no less than 1200 feet per second as we talked about we do have an adjustment up front for gas so you can have high or low so more gas or less gas they say put it on low for low brass and low velocity shells and they put it on high for three inch high velocity shells personally i've already shot this with high and low with three inch and two and three quarter and high velocity and low velocity i don't feel that much of a difference but i think it's because of the mechanics of the gun they want to keep the overall Ugh, kick from bigger rounds reduced so they put it on high when you're using higher shells and you can do that like i talked about pulling the charging handle out sticking it in there turning down the gas or turning up the gas and it should help out with your higher low velocity shells hope that makes sense this thing's cool let's start shooting at the steel and see how reliable this is so i have the gas set on low let's do some low velocity shells da, 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 da. i'll speed this up you gotta trust me that i'm <laughs> not skipping forward of anything as we load. It just takes too much time if we do it the other way. Ow! Damn! Son of a bitch! <laughs> she got myself a cardboard cut. It's like jamming your toe into something or anything with your fingernails or paper cuts hurt like, I'd rather break a bone. God! Ah! One shell, two shells, three shells, four shells. I love the fact that this is so easy to load it's not resisting a ton it just has enough just like a normal semi-automatic shotgun wood it's not like you have to keep pressing and it gets harder and harder even the fifth shell is very easy and you can go on the other side and start loading the other five or you can rotate and go to the next cylinder i'm going to rotate because then it loads that first shell in keep it on safe and load five more into that new tube <laughs> one Two. And the more you practice this, the easier it's going to get. Three, oh, four. <laughs> Testing dirty shell now. Five. And you rotate to the next cylinder. So that first cylinder is only going to have four shells in it. And I'll rotate it back around to that so it stays true to its nature. Get in there. One, two. Three, four. I'm not gonna show this every time because that would just take freaking ever. But the more you practice this, the more you can hold it. Rotate, 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 and you'll be good. I'm gonna rotate this around and go back to that first cylinder because that first cylinder only has four in it now, technically. So you can go back to that cylinder. One's in the tube, ready? This cylinder only has four. Now it's got five. So now we have 15 plus one, so 16 shells. We have the Vortex, like I said, Razor AMG. This thing's awesome. And 
Brightness up. Let's shoot that steel. Woo woo. So that one cycles back, bolt locks back, push that in, rotate, automatically feeds the next shell in, into the tube, and you can get back on the gun. Rotate, push in the release, loads the next shell. That's awesome. Fed them fine, felt great. It does have some kick. It's like a 12 gauge. It's, I'm not going to say, oh, it's very little. No, it's still got some kick. It's not like it's the most recoil reduced shotgun I've ever felt. Uh, it definitely still has some kick and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And it's compact, it's a bullpup. So you're going to get that gas coming back in your face. You're going to be getting that recoil 12 gauge. I think you guys get the idea. Slow up 15 more. One, two. I'll speed this up for you. I think that's 15. All right, shooting. Let's go to the uh, plates and in the middle. Did I? Did that feed? One, two, one. Oh, I must have only loaded four in there. I thought I loaded five. It's not jammed. The cylinder is empty. You can see it when I turn this over. The cylinder only had four in it. Let's go back to the plates. I'm not sure how long those will last. They're probably going to die here in a second. Oh. Ooh. Failure to feed. Come on. Okay, loaded it up that time. Okay, empty. So we had one failure to feed. Keep track for yourself. Next one in, right in the middle. <laughs> Gun is clear. That's really cool. So far, it feels great, cycling fine. This is a brand new shotgun, so I can't just like, oh, screw this gun. This is definitely not ready for the military because it had one failure to feed. I'm not the tactical guy. I'm not that guy to go crazy over one failure to feed. Fix the problem, get back in the fight, stop complaining. If we threw out every gun that ever had a problem, you wouldn't shoot any gun. And I've never seen one person on the gun range see someone have a failure to feed in their gun and go, I'm never shooting that. Obviously, reliability is huge and you want to keep an eye on that, but you don't just go, oh, there's one failure to feed. The shotgun needs some more improvement. Got to go back to the drawing board. No, Shit like that happens. All right, I just, ugh. too many people, especially in the gun community now with gun reviews, it's like everyone races to find the problem rather than actually racing to enjoy the shotgun or the pistol or the rifle for what it is and just report what they find and let you guys make up your mind. And I don't want to be one of those curmudgeon basement dwellers that are just, let me get in front of the camera and state my opinion and yeah. All right, next box. All right, more ammo. Let's do something a little bit different before we get back into the simple bird shot. Let's do uh, two and three quarter, 1,325 feet per second, nine pellet, double op buck. I uh, couldn't find three inch today at the store, sadly, but two and three quarter, double op buck. Let's see how well they feed through the shotgun. Five of them there. I hate wasting double op buck, but I guess this isn't wasting. It's, it's important information. So there's five. Let's just cycle those in. And then, yeah, let's just do, let's just do five at a time. Right in the middle. Yeah, simple, easy peasy. Uh, those are 1325, so I probably could have turned it on to the high level, but I really don't feel that big of a difference and it takes so much extra time to turn it and adjust it. And right now I don't want to do that. So feels fine, feels very easy. And with a higher velocity, it's going to have more reliability for cycling. So let's load five more, so let's load I think I have 10 more of those double op bucks. Let's load them all up, or nine. I think I used one earlier for B-roll. Let's load all nine. There is five. Yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah, there. I think it's five, yep, five. And the other, come on. It's like Costco packaging. You sometimes just don't have the time to open it properly, just gotta get into it. Probably should try decaf, that's a good idea for filming days. See if I can load this all tactical. Eh. <laughs> eh. That's not gonna work. This is gonna go badly real fast. How to load 10 double up buck shells tactically. <laughs> Four, five, and where were it? Dusty shells, who cares? Let's see if they cycle. There is the fourth, so we have nine. Let's just shoot all these real quick. Rotate. 
right in the middle. No problem, rotate. Not a problem, let's keep feeding this monster and see if we have any issues. So let's move into the big boys. We got one ounce slugs, 1,560 feet per second. Oh, the, oh crap, I thought these were gonna be, I thought I got three inch, <sighs> two and three quarter, but still 1,560 feet per second. Let's load five of these and see how they cycle. Gentle. There we go. Now we're cooking. This is where that single point sling would probably come in handy. I should have just grabbed it. I have a million of them. There are five one ounce slug rounds. Put them on this side. Tactical. All right, let's load those slugs up, rotating in. And you can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise either way with these tubes and it'll feed the next shell in. Like this time I'm going clockwise, loading them up. All right, five slug rounds. Ooh, yeah, a little bit more punch. And I tried those slug rounds with the high setting set on and the recoil reduction is a little better, but personally don't think it's worth taking the time to do it, but you can do it. If you know you're gonna be running a lot of high velocity shells all day, just turn on that high and save yourself a little recoil, but not much. These are three inch, 1550 feet per second, three shot. Yeah, this can be interesting. All right. Load these up. I'm not sure how many I have left in here. I just grabbed this box before I left. Let's see. I think we have like nine or something in here. These are three inch, so this tube's only gonna hold four. The three gun belt, you can grab all three and you shove down with your thumb. And so I'm trying to put them in my hand like I would with that. Uh, these are three inch. Let's just do one more and try two at a time. So if you were to grab two, you put it in here, you just push it onto the gun. Whoop. Yeah, that does work. So you can get used to that. If you had a little tack belt, shh, shh, I should have brought mine. Once again, what a shit it coulda. But you grab, push, grab, push, grab, push, and you can rotate as you go. And that would be pretty interesting. So there's four in that. That one loads up, put the safety on. I think I have four more in here. Once again, very tactical. Yeah, oh, your the audio must be great for you right now on my mic. <laughs> uh, I think that's, yeah, it's four. We'll rotate that over and then I have one extra. We'll keep that tube on that. I think I've five, four, four, eight, nine. I think there's nine. Here we go. Safety off right in the middle. <laughs> yep. That was the one with the two shells in it. So that's fine. Cause I had one in the tube and only one in that chamber. Next one going in. Uh, yep, we had three. God, I must be counting like an idiot. Cause this isn't jamming. You can see that tube is empty. And so is that one. And then the next one, that one should be four. Dude, <laughs> that steel just eh. Yeah, so higher velocities. This thing cycles on like a dream. It's designed for higher velocity shells. It, it wants to eat those higher velocity shells. So I think higher velocity isn't gonna be a problem. But once again, don't let anybody tell you that this doesn't have recoil and felt recoil. It does, you feel it. Um, but it's a 12 gauge. Just go shoot a regular 12 gauge. And if you don't like that, you're probably not gonna like this. But this does feel good. It feels like a standard 12 gauge shotgun. Just you have three tubes, semi-automatic feeding into this bullpup futuristic badass little gun so a little bit of a difference i don't know what the hell is happening with my shepherd's hook with that steel plate but it's just not having it i think i grabbed the the skinnier shepherd's hook that i have i have a big one and two skinny ones i think i grabbed two of the skinny ones and they're not quite up to par today so <laughs> a little rickety dinkety but it is what it is should have brought other steel plates let's load bird shot up again and just keep cranking out shells. And I'm gonna tell you if there's any fillers to feed because I think the biggest issue is finding if this will reliably feed lower velocity shells without any failures to feed or stove pipes or anything like that. So that tube is loaded up, I think. I think it's loaded up, yeah. I think there's five in that one. Safety is on. Ah. My tactical loading skills. 
before I move on, I probably should show you how this button works. So you can get rid of shells one at a time and kick them out like so. I'm no longer doing torture testing with my reviews. God, that paper cut. Uh, because torture testing is, I'll speak more of it in another video, but unless you have a ton of different shotguns, like if I had a hundred of these shotguns and was able to test them thoroughly and put a thousand shotgun shells through each one, I can then say this gun is fully reliable and they'll never have an issue, most likely. But with one shotgun and one unit out of so many being made, even if this shotgun performs very well, it doesn't mean it's perfect. You can get one yourself and it could have some issues. And that's where the community of the gun community comes in where we really need to help each other out. So if one of you buy this shotgun and there's some sort of issue with it, talk to people about it. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but definitely talk about it and contact IWI because I'm sure they don't want products failing either. All right, you got 15 more. Let's shoot the center steel and move as fast as I can. Rotate. Oh, shit. rotate. Oh. One, two, three. Oh yeah, four because that tube had four in it. No, nothing jammed, that tube's empty, that tube's empty, that tube's empty, and the bolt is locked back. So, chamber's locked back, tubes are empty, no jams. This thing's nice, this is a whole lot of fun, and my paper cuts, it hurts. <laughs> Go to the wonky gangster leaning plates. <laughs> These things, uh, so, so much for that. Oh man. All right, rotating over. Oh, we still had one left in that chamber. Oh, that's cool because unless it locks back, you can tell that your tube still got ammo in it. So obviously, but it's, your body gets used to that audible sound of it clicking back and you can rotate to the next shell. So if you were to go to the next tube and you don't he hear it feed, you know the other tube still had a shell in it. Now that it locks back, listen. It's just clear and present. Rotate. Ah! <laughs> Cycling fine. All tubes are empty. Chamber's open. Rotate. Ah! <laughs> this thing is a beast. Yeah, I'm loving it. That paper target's gonna get jacked here in a second. I think you guys get the idea, this shotgun's, for what this one is, doesn't mean it's all of them, but for what I'm seeing on this one, pretty damn reliable, especially with the high velocity stuff. We had that one failure to feed, and other than that, so far, nothing. Granted, I'm not a ton of shotgun shells in. I think what we're shooting right now, along with B-roll shots, I think I'm about, 200 shells in maybe three four five definitely get faster though the more you load this thing i don't want to be too long-winded let's just blast this paper and a few more shotgun shells hey y'all rotate rotate <sighs> lock back cylinder is empty cylinder is empty cylinder is empty this is pretty awesome. Guys, I can keep shooting the heck out of this shotgun. Eventually there might be another failure to feed, failure to extract, but overall this shotgun, very well made. IWI has taken, I think two or three, three years, because I remember seeing this at SHOT Show like two or three years ago, and they were like, oh, it's gonna come out. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll see. And it's taken a while and taken a while and taken a while, and now it's here. And I also don't wanna be so egotistical to think that my one review is the end all be all for this shotgun. But as far as I see it, this thing's reliable, it's fun to shoot, it looks cool, feels good, you definitely have good ergonomics, everything feels right where it needs to be, it looks cool. I think I said that twice, it's worth saying twice. <laughs> this is Andrew Poacher with GY6 Vids, thanks for watching another full review video. I hope you had some fun, hope you got some information, hope you enjoyed the cinematic looks, a different B-roll and slow motion, it takes a lot of time, and I want to say thank you once again to my patrons. If you guys haven't already, go check it out. Maybe become a patron, pledge a dollar a month, $12 a year, helps a ton. Like I said, I do this on my own, and any support is appreciated. If you don't, 
and you just want to keep clicking that like button and subscribing and sharing the content with friends and family and other people you know, that's also appreciated. And if you don't want to do any of those things and you're just like, no, what, screw you, I just want to watch your videos, well, rock on. I'm still going to keep doing my thing. So <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Later.